and welcome to a different kind of video. Now, usually we have an unboxing and we have beautiful product shots and then a track and all that stuff for a product that you want information on. And we're not doing that because it is about 90%, I would say likely, that you know most there is to know about the Quad Cortex. You have a head start on me because I don't. Now here's the story. Quad Talks, Quad, 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 <laughs> Quad Cortex came out and everyone was like, oh my God, Neural, Neural, Neural. I had never played and still have never played a Neural plugin. Every time I hear them, I'm like, this is good shit. The plugins sound phenomenal. All the videos, all the clips, all the ads, everything I've seen for the plugins, phenomenal. It is absolutely up my alley in terms of the legalities or the ethics of it, because anything they do in terms of actual amps, whether it be Morgan, Tone King, uh, Soldano, Fortin, Mesa, is actually together with the companies, fully signed off, fully logo, uh, the looks of it, everything. And then nailing the sound. As far as I can tell, I've never played one. And then the ones they're doing with artists are great ideas. Get a toolbox of what the artist needs, but the visuals of the amps are fictional. They are fantasy, which is totally fine. We focus on the sound of the artist, not what did he actually play. I love this. And for some reason, I mean, they have a lot of good friends in the industry, so they don't need me. Neural has never worked with me. And the Quad Cortex came out and everyone and their mom got one. My friend Carlos got two because one of them got stolen or something. Not a problem. We were, I mean, I'm a bit bitter about this. I'm sorry. So I contacted some of my friends. Hey, can you hook me up with Neural? And then they did, and emails were exchanged. Nothing ever happened. I don't know why Neural doesn't want to work with me. Maybe that's not even the case. I have no idea. But I still never had my hands on any of the plugins. And you can say, well, of course, I could have bought them. But I mean, that's not what I do. I don't buy things and then advertise them. That's not how advertising works. Um, and most certainly the Quad Cortex, I only heard great things about it. It looked fantastic. Every time I heard it, it sounded fantastic. But I cannot give you an informed buying decision or a this is what I think about the piece of gear if I actually only heard it and never had my hands on it. And that never happened. And then Sweetwater said, uh, what do you want to do, Henning? Uh, we have these things we'd like to talk about. What do you want to talk about? I said, I, this is my chance to get my hands on a quad cortex, check it out and present it to you. So Sweetwater was super nice. Thank you, Sweetwater. To send a quad cortex, I said, no money exchanges hands, but I'd like to keep it if it's awesome. And boy, is it awesome. So here's my two cents. This whole video is just what, what do I think about the Quad Cortex after playing with it for two hours, maybe? I have not read a manual. I have not installed updates. I have not signed up for the cloud and downloaded more AMP profiles or IRs. I have done no such thing. I took it out of the box, put it on the table, put up preset one. And honestly, that's all you need, I think, if you're into rock and roll. <laughs> Honestly, I got stuck on preset one, and that is already just like sign off on it. Holy crap. Because of the scenes, which are similar to Line 6's snapshots. What, what is this? So changing all the algorithms, the amp, the cap, the effects and everything, that usually comes with a bit of a dropout in sound. So in a song, you don't really want that. So you can actually build yourself a virtual pedal board or actually virtual combination of amps. And then all you do is within that preset, turn these on and off. And that's what scenes are. They are presets within a given set of gear. And again, preset one is all you need. Now, usually you go to preset one on any of these types of boxes and it's like, hmm, they need better people to program presets. Not the case here. It's fantastic. So before we go into more stuff, not, not 
not more the company before we go into more stuff about the quad cortex and what I found out. And again, there's so much that I don't know. There are amazing videos on channels of friend of mine where you hear the same kind of amp on a helix quad cortex and a fractal. I can't, I, it's all out there. All the information you need is out there. The only information you get in this video is what did I find out after about two hours without a manual? That's, that's what we're exploring. What can you find out within, uh, within, uh, within an hour without a manual? So here's preset number one and what you can do with it. Step number one of why I think this is pretty damn cool. First of all, let's talk price point. The top of the line rack mounted fractal is more. And then there's the FM something, FM something. Uh, I have not edited on them. Don't know. I only played the rack mounted one, uh, Axe FX3, at uh, my friend Lance's place, who sadly passed away uh, in a live stream. Didn't get the feel from it that I get from this, but that is all. So I cannot really comment on the fractal. Um, I know the Helix can get you sounds that are good if you work on it. You don't have to really work hard here. But then also footprint. Uh, the competition is bigger. And bigger in this case isn't better. Full-size Helix is a good piece of gear. I mean, quality metal, sturdy little screens on each uh, foot switch. This is good shit, but it is heavy and big and it will be an extra piece of gear you're carrying, whereas the Quad Cortex will fit in your backpack or depending on, yeah, depending on your gig bag, probably in your gig bag. Big, big plus. I mean, this is a small pedal. It's not gigantic. Now, my friend Bernd pointed out, who had one and I think sold it, there's a couple of people who had it and sold it, I don't quite understand why, um, that the foot switches are also knobs. And I do think, so you see, I can actually, I mean, you can operate this touch screen with your fingers, yes, but the fact that these are knobs, when I saw that years ago when it came out, I was like, this is freaking brilliant. This is a switch and then it switches. This is amazing. My friend Bernd said, well, I've played a lot of cover gigs. That's never going to last. And what if someone pours beer over it? Well, if someone pours, pours beer into this in general. I mean, it's open on the sides right here. You know, you, you don't, you don't want that. Um, so I, I don't know about the sturdiness and how many gigs will it survive if people pour beer into it. I don't know what happens when people pour beer into the competition. 
I love that about it. I love the amount of foot switches. I love that they show you in colors what's going to happen. Now we're in stomp mode, meaning I can actually turn the individual stomp boxes. That's a drive. That's a drive. That's a comp that shows me in green. You know, I mean, that's pretty standard operation. So I have two amps in there. So I can actually go from a clean amp to a driven amp. That's the delays. You can do this. You push these two on a, on a table. That's a little bit more complicated. Now we're in preset mode. Now these actually go between presets. I only have one of my own because honestly, that's all I need. Um, yeah. And then there's scene mode, which that is kind of like the snapshot mode. And within, so this is a clean one. That's a driven one with delays always on. Um, then we're driving more and then we're driving a lot more. And that's don't, ah, that's the clean one with the drive in front. Yeah. That's what, that's what I did. And how did I do it? Really easily. I have not read a manual. It's, it's pretty phenomenal. So. You have, I mean, let's look at, we, we looked at the attorneys holding this in will give you a tuner, which is very, very sensitive and you can unmute it or mute it. So That's how you change modes. When you're in preset mode, up and down for banks. I mean, let's go here. Factory presets, we'll, we go here. And now this will go up and down for banks. Right now it's flashing, so it's telling you you're not actually there yet, my friend. So you click it and then you're actually there, my friend. Up and down. Um, when you're in scene mode, this will go up by preset. It all really kind of makes sense. You can already see there's more complicated routing that you can do. It has two inputs. Let's go to the back. And fascinatingly, these are combo inputs. There's also uh, phantom power uh, mic preamps. You can go in with an acoustic guitar and maybe even vocals if you wanted to. So two XLR inputs on a guitar pedal. Awesome. Absolutely. And of course, combo inputs. I'm using one right now. There are two loops. We're going to explore that. I have not explored it yet. So we will. Loop number one, loop number two. Secondary outputs. So I'll put three and four in addition to the XLR. This is for profiling. And don't ask me what that is. Uh, so I don't know. Um, and then full size MIDI expression, two inputs and for the editor and loading your own IRs and all that stuff. As I said, I haven't done it yet. And the input is 9 or 12 volt. And I'm actually right now not using the supplied power supply. I'm using a Chox DC7 with the crux. So this crux right here is enough in 12 volt mode to power the quad cortex. So you could easily power this on your pedal board without uh, the external power supply if you have a Chox DC7 and a, and a crux. Of course, it can do Profiling. So you can profile individual pedals if they're drive pedals. You can do time pedals. It's just physically not possible. You can profile, of course, you know, you, you, you capture your probably caps, but definitely your amps, um, and take your collection with you. And then, of course, this being shared and many people do quad cortex profiles. I honestly, with everything that's in there, yeah, you might not have that amp by name, but you probably have something that that amp does by function without ever going to the cloud and downloading things. I know for you collectors, you want the certain amp done by some... I like playing music. So as long as the sound's in there, I don't care what the name says. But you could. And you can use it to profile by itself. I haven't done it. I'm not really ma majorly interested in that. Sounds this good. What do you need that for? I'm going to go back to my presets. There's, of course, downloads and other things where you can go. But here's my presets called the Freeds. And since Boutique Amps Distribution works with them, they could even call it Freedman. I don't think they would have a big problem with that, but they call it Freeman or whatever. So I have a clean Freedman and a rhythm Freedman. Thank you for that, sweet water. I put a comp in front of it. That's some kind of 
cab. And of course, you can do the whole, you know, moving distance and all that stuff. Put your own hours in, change mics, all that goodness. The touchscreen is just, you don't need a manual, maybe for the super advanced stuff. Like if I want it, for example. I mean, really not. I mean, I don't need a manual for that. What input am I using? One, two, return one, return two, or connect it with USB as an audio interface, or use them as stereo inputs. Right now, we don't need that. Where is it going? Well, it's going right now out of all of them. But you can say only one, two, only three, four, only out of the sense. This is what we're going to need when we're adding an effect. Let's see if I can do that later. Uh, I have not done it yet. Uh, you can define all the outputs, USB, or you can say go to row three if you needed a longer chain, or row four, or row three and four. You can have parallel inputs. There's so many options similar to, of course, what the big helix will give you, not what the uh, stomp will give you, which is uh, smaller than this, but you don't want to edit on it. Trust me. Do you need the editor software for this? I actually don't know how much faster you are because with the turny, clicky switchies and the touchscreen, this is very fast and very intuitive. So I'm going to show you this thing right now. So that's just a clean sound with some delay and reverb. This is the Maybach, I think it's called Little Wing, hollow body. I, I started trying these together and wow. So now I take the clean amp and I just add an overdrive. Now that's the rhythm amp without a drive. We add one overdrive. Oh, we add two. Now there's also more delay. And you can actually de determine per block what changes with scenes. So if I go in here, for the amp, for example, you see right there, there's a little sign. If I hold this in, I can unassign that it changes along with scenes and then the amp will always be, or whatever it is, um, the same. I could do this for each parameter saying that gets changed with scenes. You could have different settings for the same amp if you wanted to, and that's how you do it. And you know what? I, I it, There's all these scenes which you can change here right now showing you scene D. All the stuff I found out by playing around. Let's do, talk about playing around, let's noodle a bit with my good friend Tom James from Elevated Jam Tracks and show you this thing in context. How about them apples? <laughs>
that is pretty utterly ridiculous. It's all one preset. And for my cleans to lead to technically rhythms, which I didn't build, you've got everything that you need. So right here, that's just the rhythm, but I would have to build, let me see. Let's go to F, I don't have an F. F and turn that off. And here, same thing, F, turn that off, done. And technically, let's see. Oh, there's a drive on, which I could just go to stomp mode, turn that off. And now we got a super dry, just rhythm amp. <laughs> So you get the idea. Now, there is obviously a lot more in this. From the ridiculous cleans to sometimes way bass heavy sounds that I don't like. Sometimes that's just in the cab or maybe the amp capture too much low end and you're going to experience that in the presets. But you know, the thing is, just avoid those because there's so much to explore. Let's go into some presets. <laughs>
Now, there's obviously many things that this thing can do, which is why there's a billion videos about it, from expression pedals to all these things. It's just, I love the interface, the form factor, and the fact that it makes me make music. Because you could go to this preset, or, nope, set lists. I love that. Oh, here, bank one, first preset, done. That preset, and technically, with the scenes, be done with it. Just make music. From the first moment you turn this on, you can just make music. It takes a while to boot, but it doesn't have to. Go here, put it in standby. That's how it rests on my table now. And then you do this. You have an idea? Start right away! Super simple, okay? Let's try to add a delay to this. So how would we do that? We need some space there, right? Let me fiddle with it. And we're going to fast forward that a tiny bit. I'm just going to make some space. I mean, I made another row, moved things over, and there's just a thing that says effects loop one. Let's see if that does it. I'm now wired with the Joshua into effects loop one, and it's on, so. I mean, this literally couldn't have been easier. You can have parallel routes. You've seen all the videos, but I mean, this is just 
about a guy, okay, I, I have these types of products every day, but just intuitively getting the sound I want, including my personal effects, and making music. I think this is more musical in the sense of you're not fiddling too much with the tech, you just get to the point and then have fun. even have trails on when you turn it off. So I could actually go full mix on the Joshua. And then let's hear it. Then I turn this to scene. Uh, I am in scene, good. And then go to B. And now I'm done. And now it's off. I mean, it's, that's really easy. Something, let me show you one more thing. Something really cool that they did is, there's one preset where they literally have eight scenes and eight different amps because they all fit in there. And you're not running them at the same time, which you could run somewhere at the same time. We've seen these kind of presets uh, when we play the presets. This is just you going on stage with eight different amps at your disposal, MIDI switchable, all that stuff within the same scene. There, So there's no switching uh, dropouts and you could run your pedal board into all of them. Uh, let's check out that stuff. That's really cool. possible. Now, of course, I haven't shown you almost anything. I mean, you can, you know, um, set it up, you go here, change device, you can pick whatever amp you want. I don't even know how many there are, bass, guitar, there's also then captures, which is different. I don't even ask me. And then all these different categories that you can put in. IR loader, I don't even know what morph is, there's loopers, there's gates. Now, there aren't a million delays in there. I don't think it's necessary. There aren't, this is the exact tape delay that Gilmore used. Who gives a crap? I don't. I really don't. It is just good sounds. And they're working on updates. Uh, a thing that many, many people criticized is they said from the very beginning that the plugins will run on the Quad Cortex. That is now, I think, half true, and they're working on full compatibility, but you also then for that have to buy the plugin, obviously, and then run. But I mean, do you really need that? Do you need the chorus that there's plenty chorus? When there's great choruses in there, I personally think that everything is in there that's in there is already enough to make any kind of music. If you cannot record an album with what's in there, then it is you and your music and your playing that sucks. I recorded albums with James LeBring from Dream Theater, Sebastian Bach, uh, Steve Walsh from Kansas, and all these guys. And I used a pod too, which was shit. Nobody ever, there were thousands of reviews, nobody ever said, Oh, Henning's guitar sounds suck. They listen to the music. Not a single review said the guitar sounds are bad. When the guitar sounds were bad, this beats it 
and the competition, honestly, by a lot. I'm not saying this because I'm getting paid, because I'm not getting paid. I'm not even related to Neuro. Sweetwater sent it to me because they're fucking nice people. Sorry, Sweetwater, I cussed. So, uh, give me the whole thing again, Leslie. Footprint, I think it beats the competition. Reliability and sturdiness, I don't know. They're definitely on it, keeping it up to date, giving you the new circle delay that's coming out or whatever. Um, there's a cloud where you can download a billion more sounds. I don't actually know if I'll ever do this. Because what's in there is a good chunk of good tones and good tools to make good tones. I don't think you need more. Go ahead, do it. Jeremy, Kyle, and a billion other people are doing captures of their amps. Go ahead, if you want the special nugget that they found, put it in there. Do you need it? I don't think so. Do I, Am I going to take my amps and profile them? No. What's in there is good. I'm kind of saddened that Neural never talked to me. It's a little bit of a, what's wrong with me? Why don't they play with me? You know? But that's my personal problem. The product that they made is where it is in the market because it is good. At this point in time, I can't fault it at anything. N nothing. It's, it's, it's not the cheapest on the market. There are cheaper products. But they're not this. That's all I can say. I'll put a link below to Sweetwater and other shops here in Europe. If you're interested, that's all I can say. This is what I think about the Quad Cortex. Holy crap. From the first minute and when the cameras are off, I can't wait to turn elevated jam tracks back on and just have fun with this stunning guitar. Really amazing tones. And this, that's a combination that makes you happy. Not just for the metal guys. Yes, for the metal guys. Yeah, it's all in there. But so much more. Thank you, Sweetwater. I love you guys. I love you guys for watching and animals at the end. <laughs>